Hey everybody and welcome back. Well, there's not a lot going on here. Um, it's just starting to rain again. It has been pouring down. Yesterday it was 70 degrees. What's that? Uh, 16, 17 degrees C, whatever. Um, so of course the snow melted, everything was really soggy and now it's pouring down. And tomorrow, well today it's 40 and tomorrow it's going to be colder again and freezing at night. So up and down, up and down. All right, nothing much going on. So we're going to get straight on with bike. We've got a few little jobs to finish. And then we're going to look, as I think I mentioned, at the silencer. So nothing more to say. Let me show you what's going on. Right, so yesterday, which was Sunday, I was out here sort of tidying up and things. And every time I walk past the bike, these indicators pointing down a bit annoyed me. So, I didn't have to start, you, actually, you can see that's on there now, nicely all done, I've done it both sides. Came out well, I think, I like the look of that. So, I didn't have to start having to cut this off at the bottom and pushing it out and all sorts of stuff. So, I thought, I will do, I'll mount it on another little piece of plate that I can kick out. So then, that was a noisy one. I was thinking about cutting this plate and everything. It suddenly struck me, this piece needed to have a hole in it. So I got the holes, one of the hole saws out, inch and a quarter, and just cut out two pieces of plate. And then opened the hole out to three eighths. So what I did was, I just clamped it on, actually just put a bolt through, and I tacked it at the top, which is, if you like, the, uh, the bit that's sticking out, because these were downwards. Then I got a screwdriver under the bottom and levered it out, put the indicator on and kept levering it out until the indicator was level and then I welded it, well bronzed it, you can see I bronzed it, bronzed it at the bottom and then went round and did both of them. So they've come out nicely. They're now level and uh, that looks alright. Once that's painted that will look fine. One other thing there, yes you can see it. I had a couple of comments about why not mount the indicators on here. Well, let me put my finger against it. See that? It's only about half an inch wide. This is a 3 8 mounting bolt, 10 millimeters. So they would never have worked. Apart from which they're a bit on the flimsy side, but they're just not big enough for the size of the stem. So that's that done. So let me open you out a little bit. So all the rack is now nicely done. I've got to order a couple of longer countersunk bolts for there but yeah I think that came out well all right now I want to show you a little something now remember I put the horn there now the reason it's there is really simple the box with all the horns in is on this side of the workshop so I just got a horn out from behind where you are now so that was fine and just did it again you know not giving it a lot of thought. Well then after that, I think it was old as pointed out that if I had put this on the other side, the wires, there's the connections, would have been pointing up under there. And I thought, damn he's right, instead of having them come up. But then I got looking at it and there's a lot of space in here. So what I can do is slacken that off. That right up there. not quite that far and uh, the wires will go out of the way under the tank and there's still plenty of uh, lock because it's it's right in there look there's loads of room okay just wanted to show you that what's next so the next thing I suppose to finish us off is to mount the front indicators now you know that sometimes there, well these are only 5 sixteenths, I know they're the wrong thread but the thing is it's a 5 sixteenth hole, this is a 3 eighths, so if you like that's 8 millimeter, and this is 10 millimeter. So I had thought about drilling the headlight, the threads out the headlights so I could put them in there, but actually I decided I didn't want them there. What I'm going to do is put them just nicely back here. Now I shortened this, it came to about here, the threaded portion, so that 
see that'll go on there so by shortening that see I've got the further back you go the more space I've got because of the curve of the headlamp but I didn't want to get too far back I want it to be I think about there I'm going to mess around and then mark it on one but I wanted to have enough room inside of course for this to be able to poke through and get the nut on so it's again compromised between where I want them you know it might be nice to have them out front but I don't have enough space in behind up or low because of course it's curving in all directions but I'm thinking about I don't know there halfway down I'm thinking about here so let me measure and look and then I'll drill a hole and we'll see what it looks like so been looking at this that is halfway didn't like that that's level in the center of that didn't like that and funnily enough if I want to have which I think looks best this orange part level with that it needs to go about there so that one's the line to keep because it's offset of course so although you wouldn't think so would you but anyway and you may notice I've got a I've already got an LED bulb in there so that I think is it I mean if the worst comes the worst I can always weld it up and drill it somewhere else but we'll do this side and see what it looks like so I'm going to uh, slip a little bit of wood in behind there because I don't have to take the headlight out well, I suppose I could but uh, we'll put that in there and that'll stop me drilling through into the headlight so let me drill the hole and I'll bring you back right so there it is from the side it needs tweaking down a fraction but that's nothing and there it is from the front so it's it's fractionally lower than that but I don't want it too high I think that's nice so I'll take this back off I'll make a quick little paper template to show me where that hole is and I'll do it on the other side so there's the two front ones on right and they've got their LED bulbs in as I said so I'm going to go and put the LED bulbs in the back ones so that they're safely inside the indicators and I don't knock them on the floor or anything like that so let me do that and then I have another little job to do right first thing is the new countersunk uh, quarter inch bolts arrived so they're on that's all nice so the next thing I've decided to do is just over here actually when I was looking at air filters the other day I found one that had a I don't know it was a real angle the thing came out and then the filter went downwards I'm thinking I might get one of those and then I might not have to make a mountain I've got to look into it but anyway I decided this might foul the air filter because it's going to come through so what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld onto this just a little piece that sticks down so hang on actually I found out there's enough room behind there to put the nut on so I don't have to uh, mess around putting the bolts through first little red lights on on the uh, camera so it might go off any second okay snowplow oh yes got something to tell you there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move see this this wires loads long I'm going to put a little piece on to move that down to about there it's going to be inside the uh, actually I could maybe even just put a longer bolt and put a spacer in there hang on I've got to look at that because the cover comes right out here so oh let me look at that right well this is the cover for this side that goes on there like that god I could bring it right out here oh yeah I don't have to weld anything on let me put a longer bolt on there and make up a little spacing piece and we're laughing okay 
Right then, so there's that out here on a spacer. That's the little clever doodad for the LED bulbs in the flasher units. So that was the last thing that had to be fastened on there. And then this will go on there on its rubbers and we've got, oh, we've got loads of space. We're, not, we're nowhere near touching that. Right, so that's the last of the electrical components on, all that done. Let's put that nice new sprocket on. Right, little bit of gossip. When you think of the snazzy safety glasses. Okay, today is Wednesday. The, you heard a bit of video earlier on when it was pouring with rain. That was on Monday, but I only came out for a few minutes because, oh, it's another bloody lorry. Monday, we were gonna take the two vehicles to get MOT'd. Uh, inspection take one drive back take the other one swap them over etc so Monday as you heard it was pouring with rain the reason I was only out in the workshop for a very short length of time was because not only did it rain but the battery was flat in one vehicle like the jump started in the rain then we got a flat tire in one of them it was a let's say complete washout then Monday evening Seven o'clock, power goes off. Was off until Tuesday lunchtime. So Tuesday, by the time we got up, it was freezing cold, no water. Obviously the garage was dark, garage was cold, so Tuesday was a complete washout. So here we are on Wednesday. There you go, my life. Oh, by the way, you just heard a snow plow. It's snowing like mad. So all the snow that was gone hasn't quite come back, but <laughs> there's already two or three inches out there and it's still snowing. Okay, now let's do some more work. So there's the sprocket mounted on the inside of its carrier, which is recessed here to move it over three eighths of an inch. These six bolts were an absolute bugger to get in with a nut on the back. But they're five sixteenth, they're eight millimeter. There isn't a lot of meat. This isn't a complete collar, it's oh, let me turn it round. Let's see if you can see it. They're in, oh you can't really see, can you? I don't know if you can see them in there. So what I think I'm gonna do, I can't drill it out and put a 3 8 bolt in, but what I can do is put a 5 16 insert in, I think. So that's what I'll do, eventually. But for the moment, let me just put this wheel in and make sure our chain line is right wheels in i've put a chain on and like very very fractionally not perfect but i think that's close enough and i've i can play around with this so when i've got the spaces in to mount the engine exactly correct and i've got the sprocket on tightened up then we'll check and we can make any final adjustments we need. All right, so I've just had a box come. Let's see what's in it. Right, well, this is from Peter Quick at BSA Unit Singles. Parts inside. I got a couple of little things that, to be honest, I couldn't be pestered searching for. I probably have some of these, but right, that's the strange little spring that goes down the center of the footrest. You'll see when I put them on, they're slightly unusual. I know somewhere I have got one of those footrest ends, but I'm damned if I could find it. There's the other spring for it. And a couple of little BSA ones. I've got them in red, I've got them in black, cause I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet. So let me put those to one side, but the important thing in this box is that, you know the B50s like the B25s? had black exhaust pipes. I think I have a black one. Might not be in brilliant condition, but anyway, I decided 
that I didn't want black. Come on. So I've got a chrome one. So let's have a look, see what it looks like. There, I think that looks better than a black one, don't you? So it's very good that it came because, as I say, we're going to be looking at silencers. Now it said in the thing that they'd made it slightly longer so you could fit a short, short reverse cone on. Because I guess normally it comes to about here to fit into the box, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But let me show you something. See that? There's the mountain bolt look. Actually it's... You, you know, you can force prayer. I'll have to... I can't remember. Actually, to be that like that, this end is now down on the... Touching the swinging arm. It can't be there. It's got to be about here. I was just going to say, I can't remember the last time I bought an exhaust pipe that fitted. Every one of them when they've got brackets some of them I've even had to saw you know and put little darts in put a, you know cut a little triangle out to move them and you pay all this money for a chrome pipe you know what is the pattern they make these of anyway I might just be able to finagle that it's got to come down come out so I'll put a I'll try and bend it down bend it out and then we'll see how good the chrome is because I've done that with some of them and the chrome's flaked off anyway let's talk about silencers right well silencers now then I've been thinking a lot about this because this is the standard silencer that came on like the B50T the B25T that sort of thing with this heat shield on it and a little heat shield on the top for the pillion passengers legs now I half although it's a big ugly thing it fits in with the design except that now that's in the way just but I decided although I like I th as I say, I think it fits in with the design because it follows certain lines of the frame and the tool, the side panel and things like that. But it's just too big. So I think I've gone off the idea of making an alloy one of those. I still like that idea. So we might do something like that. Or that is off a of Victor Special. As you can see, it fits on there really nicely. That doesn't look half bad. I, I don't know if this one might even clean up and shine. I think I can get a new one of these, but I'm not certain. But I don't want some cheaply megaphone type thing on it. Won't go with the look of it. That, I think, is... Let me find a bolt. Hang on, I'll switch you off. That's what it looks like bolted on. It might be a bit bulbous here. I think the swinging arm might catch there. I'm trying to remember, did they have a, a dent in them there? I mean, this one doesn't, but uh, let me sit down and look at this. But something of that sort, about that size, as I say, either that or make a sort of smaller version of the standard one. Maybe bring it up here, fit in there. An outlet there. I might make up a cardboard mock up. Hmm. Alright. 
Let me think about that. I might go out and shovel some snow while I'm thinking about it. We've had a fair bit and it's still snowing. Just put the exhaust back on so that I can see where the end goes for where a silencer would be. And look at this. It's uh, It covers the, the bolt hole for the rear engine mounting plates. Even with it touching the frame here, because I can't make it go any lower down. Or I'm going to, virtually going to be touching the swinging arm. I won't have enough room for the swinging arm to go up and down. It's got to be up here, which is where it's supposed to be. I'm going to have to do something like squeeze that in the vise so that I can move it out a bit more. God, this thing is really poor. Hmm. Okay. There you are, Steve Shop. Look what you're missing. Beautiful, isn't it? But I wish it would bloody well go away. How about that? It's a bit narrower and I'm not going to have it sticking right out here. So it's going to be uh, sort of not as deep. This you won't see. I, I want it to go in. See, it's going to go in here as well and come around the rear suspension unit. So what I'm going to do is the body is going to have that cut out, but the surface, <clears throat> if you like, won't. And all you'll see here is this will come down there, is the bolt head that we mount it with. But I think, hang on, excuse my head. This, of course, is not going to be black. That's going to be polished alloy. I like that sort of up tilt one. I didn't want it to be round. It's got to be flat. Well, I think we'll make that. Make this out of skin anyway. See what it looks like on there. And then if we don't like it, We've just wasted a little bit of alloy, but that's all. All right, now what I'm going to have to do, of course, is I'm not going to have square edges. So this is actually going to be formed. So that like the original one, the edges are curved. So what I'll do is I'll cut out the piece of alloy plus the depth I'm going to make it. Then I'll make a wooden former. So it'll be that shape but with the edges round, rounded off, as you'll see, we'll put that on, we'll put another piece of wood on top, clamp it, and then we'll hammer form it round the sides. Here, I might have to put a little cut in, but not all the way to here, right? We'll cut it up to it, and then when it forms over, that cut will close up, and we can weld it there, and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The word planish keeps coming into my mind, but it's not planish, linish. Anyway, we'll smooth it in. So that's what we're going to do. As I say, if we don't like it, we throw it away and do something else. Right, I've had to have a rethink because here's the original one. You see how big it is, how deep here. All right. Well, I only want it to stick out about an inch. It's an inch and a half there, that gives me two and a half inches deep. And we're going to put some, um, some sort of chevron shaped baffles inside it. I was looking at the, there's a company here that makes exhausts for cars called, they call them Dynaflow exhausts. And what they are is where the exhaust goes in, they're sort of, staggered baffles 
so that the exhaust comes in and it has to go around them. So basically there's no restriction to the flow in effect, which is why they call it down flow, but it does constantly deflect the path that the gases take. So I'm going to try that with this one. Okay. So to come back to my problem, if I'm only going to make it about an inch out of here, this sticks out an inch more than that. So basically, although I'd have an inch of depth here, there it would be flat against it. So my first thought was to make it to here and then curve it out round that. And partly I got thinking about the fact that, you know, this has a, the one that sticks out a long way with a pillion passenger has a heat shield on it. So I was thinking I maybe wouldn't need the heat shield if it's right close in and it's not going to have a pillion rider. But at this back end, you know, there's a chance you might reach over all sorts of things. So I thought it would be nice if it went inside. Now I have got, excuse me. A good inch and a half. I can't put this in my pocket. Oh, I'll tell you something. A, a good inch and a half there. So for the outflow, I could make it an inch and it would be nice tucked in there. So put a couple of bends in this. What it will be like is it will be like that. I mean, this will be slightly further out because we're going to have our inch. Right, so that will be like that. What do you think? I personally still like it. So I'll have to think how I'm going to do the sides for there. All right. Let me think about that a little bit more. Oh, you may notice I'm wearing my black coat today. That's because I got a call from a friend of mine who pointed out how incredibly grubby the brown one was looking, right? And as he was the one who bought me the brown one, and actually this black one, I took it to heart and I put the black one on today. The only problem is it's got a hole in the pocket. My ruler keeps falling out. So I think that will be fine. A la Otter Triumph. Only a lot more volume, I think. Okay, so let me go on, fathom out how I'm going to do this before I cut the alloy and make the wooden formers. So there we are, marked out. There's our original. I haven't marked that on because we don't actually cut that into this part. Let's say this piece is going to be complete. That will be cut into that. Because that is going to be, actually I should have marked those as fold marks. That's where it's going to go over, right? And these two are the bends which are going to make that. Now when that bends to there, I don't know if you can see all of this, then this two and a half inch piece will form up to that. Here we've got a, it doesn't quite match, so we've got to cut a little piece in. We're going to cut that, which is there, because that is going to be that piece. But as I say here, because that moves away, the part that folds over here isn't going to touch that completely, so we've got to have a little bit. So hopefully, this is giving us our two and a half inches. If I cut this out, all the way, actually that one's cut in, in a corner like that. This is our cut line, this outside one. All the way along there. I'm going to draw that in or I'll forget it. Then this, then we'll make our piece of wood this shape. And thick enough, it's going to be two thicknesses of plywood. And we'll cut our curve in it, but you'll see all that in a minute. So let me just draw that little piece in there and then cut this on the bandsaw. Right, before we go any further, I've got to, to answer a couple of uh, comments. One was, is a recent one. The other one was a while ago, and I don't think I remember to answer it. And it was asking me what 
TIG welder I used. So I used a HTP Invertig 221. I think it was about $2,000. Uh, I saw some good reviews on it from welding people on YouTube that uh, I sort of respect their views. But the other thing, I saw an electrical engineer type chap take one of these apart. And as he was going through it, he kept mentioning how all the electronic components were sort of uh, well-known brands. There were things he knew about, so they weren't just some Chinese bits. I don't know if I just said this, but I think it's made in Italy. Right, the other thing was a recent comment, but I thought I might as well answer it here. I was asked about my knockoff bell staff. Somebody said they'd look, but they couldn't read the label. So there it is. It's Spanish. Modo Technica. I got matching trousers with it, well bib fronted trousers. Uh, when I used to work, the ship's engineer I worked with had been uh, working in a, obviously in the building of a ship in a Spanish shipyard and he was a biker, motorcyclist, terrible term biker. So he bought himself this jacket and trousers to use there, didn't use them much and then didn't ride anymore so he gave them to me. Alright, let's do some work. Now here's the form I've made. I decided I only needed one thickness because all I've got to do is, is turn this over. So it's screwed into that, which will go into there. Right, then all the edges are rounded over. So that's what we're going to form over. So that'll go on there. And there's a couple of places where I can get the sort of sorted out so that I know it's in the right spot. Because don't forget when I anneal this, uh, oh, I've got light shining on it again. How's that? That's better. When I anneal this, all of these uh, marks will come off. Now what I have done, uh, I've, I'd already put one cut there because that's going to be a slightly different bend. But it struck me that although I'll be able to form a good bit of this, this part here is going to take a lot of shrinking to get it in. If, it, if I was only bending over a half inch, I could do it easily enough. So you see these black marks here. What I'm going to do is cut up to about there. Then when I shape it, this will be able to move. It'll cross over so I can cut out what's needed instead of trying to shrink all of this edge. Weld that up, planish it and uh, linish it and everything and then finish it off on here. So that's that so what I've got is just sort of a rough shape here this will go on as I'm and uh, a couple of long clamps will hold it and that way it can't move around and it can't buckle up we'll get all the hammering force to bend it round so first thing is for me to anneal it so we're all set I'm going to do this edge first I know it's a little bit bright, but if I turn any more lights off, I won't be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. Should have cut that one further up. So as when I was doing the tank, I'm just going to keep on battering this until I get it round the way I want it so I won't subject you to that I might make these cuts a little bit longer if I can anyway I'll bring it back shortly right well it's Saturday morning it's been snowing all night it's gonna snow all day 
There's probably about eight inches out there already. Okay, uh, Friday, I take the day off. I go and see a friend of mine and we have donuts and coffee. Actually, we've given up on the donuts. But anyway, yesterday I was thinking about this thing and this thing. And I decided, particularly with this one, I didn't like the idea of it just sort of being bolted on that piece of flat, plastic, flat plastic. Because if it shakes, it could snap. So what I've done, just as a, is I've made up a couple of little plates, right? I might even put a cable tie around each one. So there's one for that, and there's one for that. So that that's not just going to be stressing the mount in there. Okay. Also decided while I was getting these off that I'm going to weld the nuts for these on the back so I can just screw a bolt in. All right. Let's get back to what we're really working on. Hold on. Where are we? Which is our silencer. So let me get on the back of you. There's. Uh, our start. So the next thing I'm going to do is mark on it where that thing goes so I can make the cut out for it to go in like that. Now as I say I'm only going to cut so far. I'm not going to cut it out to here so that'll slide on there. We'll have to make a little piece to go inside but that will slide on there and then what I'm going to do is put a because uh, if I just put a bolt through It'll squish it up, so I'm going to put a piece inside as well. So I'll mark that so I can put it on here, because what I want to do... See, I did that so I could be up towards the tube. The original silencer is out here. I didn't want that. I wanted it closer up there. So that'll go like that. Also, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a piece to go inside that, which will be threaded. And then we can just pop that on there, put a bolt in and tighten it up. And I don't have to fiddle around trying to get a nut on the back. It's not that much difficult, but... So anyway, the reason I want to get it on there is to make sure that this bend here is going to follow that line. All right, so let's uh, get the old Sharpie out. Can't believe how much snow there is out there. And that is going to go about... I want this clear of that. So it's going to go out like that. And we won't make it a snug fit on that. I'll make it a good bit wider. So okay, let me go and cut this piece out and then we'll see where it slots on there like. Now decisions, decisions. Can't make my mind up here. All right, so that's going to go on there like that. See? Now then, do I want that to be vertical? Or do I want it to be at an angle like that? This is one of those where, to a certain extent, I've got to get it right first time. Do you know what? I think I want it to be vertical. Which is what I must have been thinking about beforehand. So let's bend that, then we're going to have to cut a little piece off this for it to match up with that. We'll weld that up. This, weld that up. Alright, let me put this bend in it. So, what I've done is a piece of wood in here and I've beveled the edge of it clamped it down onto the table with my nice new clamps
useful. I always keep forgetting. There's a little orange button on here. It allows you to do that. Right, so now I'm going to cut the excess off and I'll weld that up. Then we've got to fold this. Right, so let's uh, do some cutting first. So I've made the two bends and welded them in. So that's going to go like that. Then we'll make paste come in the back to do that. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is make the little piece that goes in there. So let me show you that. Right, now this is the next little bit. This little box. That is going to go on there. Like that. And then when the bottom gets welded on. That will be that. Okay. I've already drilled that out to a half inch, so I can put a, I'm going to get a piece of half inch round, drill it and tap it, and then when that goes on there, like that, we'll just have a bolt that will go through. Okay, so let me weld this piece in, and uh, we'll go on from there. So now I've got that welded in there now what I'm going to have to do I think is when I make this piece I'm going to have to put the actual threaded hole to one side so I'll have to drill it eccentrically because it, uh, it's going to be right on here but what I'm planning to do is to drill a hole through and then put a little piece of solid round in there to give it a, an edge to go on. Okay. It's getting late, I've got tons of snow. Let me see if I can get, uh, what else can I do here? Let's see if I can make that. I've got half an hour or so. Get a piece of half inch round. Right, well I've made one with this offset, but I think I'm going to make another one with it even more offset. Also, almost right to the edge, just to give me a decent... Because uh, I want it to come out here somewhere. Maybe it wasn't a brilliant idea to try and mount it like that, but... Done too much work to go back on now. Anyway, I still think that looks pretty good. I'm pleased with that shape, the size. It'll be fine for the swinging arm coming up. All right. Anyway, it's late. It's Saturday. I'm knocking off. So that's it for this week. So until next week, you stay safe and enjoy yourselves.